Mrs. Baker, you are way over your paper budget and is not even halfway through. You have to do something to make a change. I know. During the collaboration session my staff has developed an idea to solve the problem. Well tell me about the wonderful idea. I hope it raises the rigor of classroom activities on your campus. We plan on implementing Well Wednesday which represents Without Worksheets Wednesdays. The challenge is for teachers to use a variety of techniques. I am trying very hard to capitalize on the skills and abilities and knowledge of the people in the building. At the same time, I am trying to embed professional development in the things we do here. Wow Wednesday addresses an identified need on our campus to teach with more rigor in a way that promotes student engagement. And other activities we can use to direct student learning and avoid the worksheet rut. We want students to talk and create and imagine and think. In my opinion, it has gone very well this year and will be expanded for the next year. It was introduced as a requirement at the beginning of the 2015-2016 school year. The WOW tag came in because some teachers were complaining that they didn't know what to do. So I created a little video of myself explaining how to do I Have Who Has. I sent it out to faculty and I put the necessary documents in their boxes so that they could recreate it. Then I tagged another staff member to do the same thing the next week. Hello everyone. Welcome to the first installment of WowTag. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make I Have Who Has cards and use them with your class as alternatives to worksheets. Many of you already know about this activity and some of you might not have heard about it. So I hope that you find that it's something you'd like to try or remind you of something that you remember would be um, worthwhile in your classroom. Here we go. <clears throat> I Have Who Has is a group activity that uses cards with terms, definitions, questions, answers, illustrations, examples, and other representations of information specific to a subject area. Before starting this activity, the teacher and students must complete enough I Have Who Has cards so that each student has at least one card. The I Have section at the top of the card will provide an answer. Vocabulary word or illustration. The bottom part of the card will have questions that begin with the phrase, who has, and provides a definition or explanation. To begin the activity, the first student stands up and reads the I have section, then reads the who has section with a question. Because the first student only asks and doesn't answer, you draw a name to decide who gets to go first. The student whose card correctly answers the first question should stand up next and read his or her answer and then read a question. This procedure continues until time is up in approximately five minutes. I have four cards here. They're made with the um, states and capitals. So this is an example. For instance, this one says, I have Sacramento who has the capital of Arkansas. The student who's holding the answer to the capital of Arkansas would stand up and say, I have Little Rock, who has the capital of Oklahoma. The person who has the capital of Oklahoma would stand up and say, I have Oklahoma City, who has, and that's how the game goes, and it goes until um, you get back around to the end. Here's another example. <clears throat> This is the example here. This says, here's an example of how to use I have, who has in a math class. Matt stands up first and reads his card, which says, I have a square. Who has a quadrilateral with at least one pair of sides parallel? Denise immediately responds to Matt and reads her card because she knows that the definition he has just read matches her term trapezoid. And so the game goes. The reason this is so good is because not only does it provide review for concepts, but it also helps a student think in two different ways. 
is this the definition? And they also have to know that it's not the definition and be able to tell what that is the definition of. So basically they're thinking forwards and backwards and it causes the students to um, have higher order thinking skills, which is what we all want. So I hope that you enjoyed this. You will find all of these cards um, in, your, in your box at the end of the day. And you can use them to make on cardstock and laminate them. Um, you can write on it with VCV and change it. Or you can make sets of definitions that you use year after year. Um, I hope that you enjoy. And oh, by the way, Mrs. Hamby, tag, you're it. I got two kinds of response. The first was the teacher who loved it and knew it but had forgotten. And they were really happy and said thanks for reminding me. The second was the teacher who had never heard of it. Several tried it and added the technique to their bags, and several said, thanks for sharing. What a wonderful idea. Hi, I'm Miss Hamby, and I've been tagged by Miss Baker to give you an idea to use on Wow Wednesday, and I've chosen Vocabulary Matching Game. This game can be used with any subject in using your vocabulary words. I have chosen math words to play my game. The object of the game is to turn a card over, prime number, and match it with the definition. A positive integer that has factors other than one, the number, and the number itself. Example, four, six, eight, nine. The students would discuss, is this the correct answer? If so, they would take both cards and that was one match for that child. If not, you must turn the cards over and the next person will go. Example, the next person would turn this card over and realize that a positive integer, which has only one and the number itself, so like factors, two, three, five, and seven are examples of what, if they remember that the vocabulary word is here, a prime number, they get the match and they collect the cards. The one with the most matches at the end of the game wins. I tag Miss Hello, Gibbs. my name is Amberly Kelton. And I'm a special education life skills teacher here at I.W. Evans Intermediate School in Bonham. I was tagged by my amazing and awesome co-worker Christy Gibbs, a reading interventionist here at I.W. Evans in correlation with um, Wow Wednesday, where we are to provide a video showing um, an activity that can be used in place of a worksheet. Um, in our classroom, we have the philosophy of, if you sit, you don't always get. And to accommodate the diverse learning styles of students, simply doing worksheets all day long, every day, won't work. So in correlation with our campus's Wow well Wednesday strategy of foregoing all worksheets all day long on Wednesdays, I'd like to introduce Beach Ball Chatter. Balls are one of the earliest and most universal toys for babies and toddlers, and we continue to use them throughout adolescence and adulthood. Therefore, by making small changes to your activity, you can engage people of any age. For example, I would like for my students to review a science lesson on our solar system for an upcoming test. As part of pre-planning, I wrote a few names of planets on different sections of this beach ball. When a student catches the ball, he or she will locate the planet name closest to his or her right thumb, and they'll give one describing factor of this planet. So let's imagine, or let's pretend, that I've caught the ball. Um, or I've received the ball, and my right thumb is closest to the word Jupiter. Um, the student would read the word Jupiter and would give one describing, um, one describing statement about the planet they could say Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. Furthermore, beach ball chatter can be implemented to enhance mathematical, linguistic, and vocabulary skills, to name a few. For example, Mr. Ferris wants to check how well his student is comprehending Spanish to English translations in a quick, non-traditional way. In an attempt to model his expectations of the student, Mr. Ferris would receive the ball first, read the Spanish word or phrase closest to his right thumb, and once he reads the word or phrase given, he provides us with the English translation. Mr. Ferris provides the correct answer, he earns a point. If it is deemed that he provided an incorrect response, he tosses the ball to his partner and he provides the English translation for the Spanish word closest to his right thumb. Octopus. Octopus. I don't understand this word. Well, Maggie, let's step over here and let's talk about it. To teach vocabulary, you could write words or phrases on different sections of the beach ball 
if you write a vocabulary word, the student that catches the ball can provide a definition for the word or vice versa. If you have a student who needs to sharpen his or her multiplication skills, you could, for example, write multiplication facts on different sections of the beach ball, and the student must provide an answer for the multiplication problem. This is an example of our multiplication ball. The girls are going back and forth, like Miranda. Six times six. Six times six. What was the correct answer? Thirty-six. Thirty-six, good. And then she's passed it on to Miranda. As you can hopefully see, Beach Ball Chatter can be a useful tool in helping to replace some worksheets. You can personalize Beach Ball Chatter to teach and challenge students by using student interests, names, real life events, and student creative problems. Hopefully, you will find Beach Ball Chatter to be less stress for you as a teacher and a highly effective tool for your students. With that being said, I tag physical education instructor, Coach Kirsten Logan, to provide our campus with a wow Wednesday activity due next Thursday. Thank you, and remember, if you sit, you don't always get. Good morning, I.W. Evans. This is Becky Isabel teaching fifth grade math and science. I've been tagged by Mrs. Baker for a wow video. My uh, game is based on the old-fashioned game of spoons, but instead of spelling out the word spoons, we spell out the word science. The science terms are listed here on the bulletin board. The students have decks of cards and they have to put together a book. And then they grab a spoon. There are one less spoons per table, one less per person. And once one person has grabbed a spoon, the others grab a spoon. If you get caught without a spoon, you get the letter S. And you spell out the word science and so on. And so that's how the game is going, goes. Signing off. Hello, everyone. I have a bonus for you this week. We've been talking a lot about not using worksheets, but what about those times when you have to use a worksheet? How can we make them more meaningful? This bonus idea addresses that. It's called not just underlining. Here is what the sheet looks like. It shows that you put two lines under the main idea, draw a box around the keywords, circle important people, place a triangle around dates, and make a squiggle under references to other information such as charts, maps, or graphs. What could you do to make this even better and make using your worksheets more meaningful? Think about what implications this could have in using your social studies worksheets and your newspapers and your workbooks. Think about this. How could you make this even better and more meaningful for your students when you have to use a worksheet? There's your bonus for this week. Everyone have a great weekend. Hello, I'd like to talk to you today about my very favorite technique to use for summarization. It can be used for a narrative passage or a book or a novel. It can be used for a biography or an historical event in social studies. And it works 100% of the time. It's somebody wanted, but so then, the five magic words for summarization. Let me give you an example. Take the story of Cinderella. Cinderella can be summarized with those five words. Here is what I mean. Cinderella wanted to go to the ball, but her wicked stepmother wouldn't let her. So she got help from her fairy godmother, then went to the ball and fell in love with the prince. That is the whole entire story of Cinderella using five magic words that, got, that represent beginning, middle, and end. It can even do a whole novel. Take this for example. Scarlett O'Hara wanted to marry Ashley Wilkes, but he married Melanie. So she pined away for him all the way through the war and other marriages to other men. Then Melanie died and she realized she didn't want him after all. There's the whole book of Gone with the Wind summarized with five magic words. Give it a try and give it a try with your kids. It works. You can make games with cards. You can do all sorts of fun things with somebody wanted, but so then, the five magic words for summarization. Wow tag for next week is going out to Mrs. Goodwin. Mrs. Goodwin. Deal or no deal is the Wow Wednesday challenge of the week. It's played very similar to Deal or No Deal. This is a template that you can use 
it will be saved in the Evans staff drive. I've created 20 suitcases, so that means there'll be 20 questions. If I click on the suitcase, it takes me to the page. On each page, you'll find a purple box, some text that you will have to ungroup in order to add the text to it. This would be the price. It could be pickles. It could be set with your friends. It could be 10 minutes free time on the computer. Whatever you decide, you once you have that filled in, highlight and select those and group them back. Then they hide right behind the little purple square until you're ready to pull it out. Behind the case is the question and you would type your question. It could be a math question. It could be any type of question. Once again you have to ungroup them and then you can type in your question. You could also screen clip in a picture or uh, any other type of question that you might want to put in. Once the question is selected you group them back. They hide behind the case until they choose the case. The case itself will take you back to the home page. The little X is set where that you can drag it and drop it out over the case that they have selected. So you click on the case, you go to that page, ungroup it, type in your text or take a screen clipping of the prize. It's your choice what you want them to do. Would say that they have to make their choice of deal or no deal before you pull it out so they do not know what the prize is before they make your deal or no deal. I usually put in uh, extra homework, miss recess just for the fun of it, uh, or a practice academy. So you'll add your question, it goes behind the case, you add your prize, it goes behind the purple square, the case takes you back to the home page. I always write in or keep track of the current prize. It's really fun. Sometimes they get something nice. Sometimes the last person decides to ch take the deal and it's a homework, extra homework. You don't do paperwork? Okay. Our whole class gets to do fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, Wednesday we made this tree. What, tell me about that tree. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had to <coughs> write what that um, is, and we cut out leaves. And we we'll we'll see how to choose um, vocabulary words of the study book. Okay. But you still get to do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, what I like about Wild Wednesday is you can do no worksheets, and, but you still get to work and do some fun stuff. Get over. It's fun, but you don't have to do like worksheets. Yeah. What's that? In the Chromebooks. Chromebooks are fun. The iPads are too. Do you do any worksheets? Barely. No. It's supposed to be no worksheets. Okay. Is that